Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of Trailhead Explanations. In this video, we are going to cover unit test apex triggers from the module apex testing. We have covered the, the previous unit. Uh, this is the second unit. So in the previous unit, we have covered a uh, test class for an apex class. In this unit or in this video, we are going to write, an, uh, write a test class for an apex trigger. Uh, basically, which is built on contact object by the name restrict contact by name. And this epic trigger, we simply have to copy the code from the GitHub using this link. So I will be clicking on this link, uh, which will redirect me to the GitHub code. Meanwhile, uh, we will see what further we have to do. Uh, we have to create a test class uh, for this uh, epic trigger on contact object by the name uh, test restrict uh, contact by name. And our end goal is to have 100% code coverage. Uh, and before checking our challenge, we have to make sure that we run our test class at least once so that it can check all the test cases that we have. Uh, so uh, let's quickly launch our Trailhead Playground and move to Developer Console. So here we are going to create a new Apex trigger. The name I'm going to copy it from our challenge, which is restrict contact by name. And I'm going to paste it over here. From this uh, drop down, I'm going to select contact object for on which this trigger has to be built on. And I will click on the submit. Now this default layout, I have to replace it uh, by the code which is present in the GitHub. So I will go to the link which I uh, clicked, use, which I uh, just clicked on this uh, challenge, which is provided in our challenge. And here I'm going to copy this code using this icon on the right hand side, copy raw content. So this is going to simply copy all the code that we have in this uh, GitHub. Uh, so I'm going to remove this and paste it over here. So this is the uh, trigger logic that is there. Uh, I will just go through it uh, once quickly. So here this, uh, this uh, trigger will be executed whenever contact record is inserted or updated. So the events covered here are before insert and before update. So whenever a record uh, either inserted or updated by the last name as invalid name, then an error message will be generated and record will not be saved for uh, this particular record having last name as invalid name. This is the simple logic that we are uh, creating or which has been uh, given over here that contacts prior uh, to insert or update has a valid uh, in, uh, invalid data check, right? So I will quickly save this and going to file, I will going, I am going to create a new Apex class for the test class. Uh, so I will be using the name from here and I will simply paste it in the name text area, click OK. Now this is going to create an epics class, but we have to tell the runtime that this is a test class that we are going to create. Now next we have to create a method for the same. So is test static void and the name uh, method name is not given in our challenge any specific name. So I'm going to copy this uh, uh, trigger name and here I'm going to write with concatenation with test and start the method. Now here I'm going to uh, create a record of uh, contact by creating an instance of contact. So I will be just I will create an instance here. So contact con obj is my instance instance variable and new contact again. And here I have to provide the mandatory field, which is also used in our challenge. And the uh, name which is on which the check is, uh, is uh, on which this check is happening. Uh, the last name, if it is equal to invalid name, I have to provide this here so that this if condition is uh, satisfied. Now I can use a simple insert statement here because uh, it is working for both insert and uh, update. So even if I use insert statement, uh, insert DML, uh, this uh, trigger will be uh, covered. But here I'm not going to use insert, rather than I will be using database 
class uh, to use the DML uh, insert. So database dot save result here, and I will be storing it into variable results is equal to then uh, database dot here I will use insert and in this insert uh, I will be taking up this one s object s uh, all or nothing so basically this optional parameter this is an optional parameter all or nothing uh, which specify whether the operation allows partial success so if uh, this is false uh, the value specified for this parameter is false uh, and a report fails the remaining of the dml operation can still succeed so here i'm going to specify false only and for s object i'm going to specify my instance variable which i have to insert right now i will terminate this now why i have used this uh, this uh, database class to insert this record because i need uh, i need um, to apply system.asserts as well. So on what I'm going to uh, apply this assert statement or assert uh, logic. So basically this method, uh, this database.insert method uh, returns a result object that can be used to verify which record succeeded or which, is, which record failed and what was the reason behind the fail. So I'll be using this uh, thing, uh, this, feature of this uh, method database.insert uh, to apply the assert on. So what I will be doing here is I will write sys, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll be writing here system.asserts and only one condition I'm going to specify that result. So this is eventually going to uh, give me an error as per this logic because last name I'm providing here is invalid. So this is definitely going to give me an uh, give me an error. Uh, so this should not get inserted, right? This will not be, the statement will fail. And here I'm writing system.assert dot is success in negation, right? This is uh, false. If success is not there, that means if this is failure and I'm writing that, uh, in system.assert. That is the reason, one reason that I'm using this uh, database class to insert. And before this, I have to just uh, test dot start test. And I will stop test after this. That's it. This was the basic uh, implementation for the test class uh, for our trigger. There is some error variable does not, okay, I'm sorry. This is supposed to be result, yeah. So this is the simple implementation that we have to implement over here. This is supposed to be method. And hopefully this should save now, yeah. So I'm going to test this and run all tests over here. Before this, I'll go to test, yeah. Click on this run all. Now, hopefully our test cases should pass. Yeah, it passed and the code coverage that we are getting is 100% again. So this should uh, you know, pass all the test cases for our challenge as well. Click on this ch uh, check challenge button and hopefully this unit should be completed. Let's wait. There you go, this unit has been completed. In the next video, I'll be covering the last unit of this module. Till then, take care. See you in the next video. Bye.